I would explain the law of total probability by using this example. The airline company Air Elon schedules a flight every day from Dublin to Amsterdam. The probability that the flight to Amsterdam is late is 0 0.03. So I will let the letter L be the event of a flight being late. We are given that the probability of L is 0 0.03. From this we can work out the probability that a flight is not late. I will call the event of a flight not being late NL. So, since a flight is either late or not late, can't be anything else, the probabilities of the events L and NL must sum to 1. So the probability of NL must be 0.97. The probability of complaints from passengers on a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam which is late is 0 0.9. So I'm going to let the letter C be the event that there are complaints on a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam. We are given that the probability that there are complaints on a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam, given that the flight is late, is 0 0.9. The probability that there are no complaints from passengers on a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam, which is not late, is 0 0.2. So I will leave NC be the event of no complaints on a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam. So we are given that the probability of no complaints on a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam, given that the flight is not late, is 0 0.2. We want to calculate the probability that on a flight that is chosen at random, there are complaints. So we want to find the probability of a complaint. So a flight that's chosen at random from maybe thousands of flights from Dublin to Amsterdam, could either be late or not late. Regardless of what, whether it's late or not late, we want the probability of complaints on that flight. So if a flight is chosen at random from all these flights, it means that um, each flight has the same chance of being chosen. Now to explain the ideas behind total probability, I want to look at the universal set of all flights from Dublin to Amsterdam. So you can imagine maybe thousands of flights or more and here, this is the set of all of them. We call it U. And we can divide this set into flights that are late and flights that are not late. Um, now, the flights that are late and the flights that are not late are disjoint sets. And the union of them will give us all of this set here, all of U. So we can just partition the set U into two sets. So this one I will call L and this one is NL. So you can see that L union with NL is the universal set of course because we, we have all the flights included here. Either a flight is late or it's not late and of course the intersection is empty. A flight can't be both late and not late at the same time. That's impossible. So these are disjoint sets. So we say that we have partitioned the set U into two disjoint sets. Now let's consider the set C, that is the set of flights um, where there were complaints. Now C is obviously a subset of all the flights. And some of these flights for which there were complaints may have been late and some of them may not have been late. So we need to show the set C intersecting both L and NL. Of course, all the elements outside of C in the shaded region here um, form the set NC. Or if you like, C complement. I could have called NC C complement. Likewise, I could have called NL L complement. But I think I'll stick with NC and L NL for now. So you can imagine an element of set U, as represented by a dot, as a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam. So if the dot is here, then we're talking about a flight from Dublin to Amsterdam. This dot is a, represents such a flight for which there were complaints, and it's also a flight that's late. So we could have many thousands of dots in the set U, or maybe hundreds of thousands, whatever. Now we can think of the set C as the union of two disjoint sets. Here is one of the disjoint sets, and here is the other one. 
I will use different colors. This blue set is the intersection of C and L. So any point in here represents a flight that for which there were complaints and this flight is also late. So this blue region is C intersecting L. So pints in here belong to both C and L. Now what about this region out here? Well, this yellow region is the intersection of C and NL. So if there's a point in here, it represents a flight for which there were complaints and a flight that was not late. So C intersecting L, the blue region, and C intersecting NL, the yellow region, are disjoint sets. Another way we can say that is if we take the intersection of these two sets, we get the null set. We've seen in previous videos that if two events are disjoint, then the probability of the union of the two events is the sum of the probabilities of the two events. Again, just to remind you where this comes from, in a previous video we considered the probability of C as being the number of elements in C divided by the number of elements in the universal set. Well, if we take the number of elements in C intersecting L and you know, add it on to the number of elements in um, C intersecting not L and divide by the number of elements in U, then if, you know, the number of elements in C intersecting L divided by the number of elements in U is just the definition of the probability of C intersecting L. And if we divide the number of elements in C intersecting NL by the number of elements in U, that gives us the definition of the probability of C intersecting NL. Anyway, that's just revision. The next thing that we do is apply our conditional probability to each of these probabilities. So let's look at the probability of C intersecting L. Well, let's first of all consider the probability of C given L. We know from a previous video that that's the probability of C intersecting L divided by the probability of L. So we divide by the probability of the event that's conditioned on. So L appears in the denominator here. And we just have to cross multiply now to get the probability of C intersecting L. It's just the probability of C given L multiplied by the probability of L. Similarly for for this probability here, the probability of C given NL is the probability of C and not L divided by the probability of not L. So just by cross multiplying we see that this probability is the probability of C given N L multiplied by the probability of NL. And this is the theorem of total probability for the probability of C given that it's partitioned into two disjoint sets. We could extend this result to the situation where C is say um, partitioned into three disjoint sets where C is the union of three disjoint sets and we would just have another term involving conditional probability. But normally we will just work with the situation where our set is partitioned into two disjoint regions. So here is the formula for the law of total probability when an event A is partitioned into two events B and C. So event A is represented by this set here and A is the union of two disjoint sets B and C, then the probability of event A, which in the frequency interpretation would be the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in the universal set, is given by the probability of A given B times the probability of B plus the probability of A given C times the probability of C. So you see that we condition A on both events 
B and C, we get these two conditional probabilities. And we multiply each conditional probability by the probabilities of the events that are conditioned on. So we're conditioning on B in this first probability, so we must multiply by the probability of B. We're conditioning on C in the second prob conditional probability here, so we must condition, we must multiply by the probability of C. Of course, we can imagine A being partitioned into more than two sets. It could be partitioned into three sets. So this could be B, C, and D. In this case, the probability of A would have an extra term. We would, we would have to get the probability of A given D and multiply this by the probability by the probability of D. But usually we will just be working with two sets. So for now I'll just state the law of total probability for the case where a set A is partitioned into two disjoint sets, B and C. So now to go back to our example, um, Again, we see that set C is partitioned into two sets. This we can call L, and this one is NL. So we get the probability of C given L, multiply by the probability of L, and add on to that the probability of C given NL, multiply by the probability of NL. Now we've got some of these probabilities here. We have the probability of C given L, 0 0.9. We have the probability of L, it's 0 0.03. We don't have the probability of C given NL, but we do have the probability of NL, which is 0 0.97. So we have to find the probability of C given NL. Now we use this probability here to get our answer. We're given that the probability that there is no complaint on a flight, given that the flight is not late, is 0.2. So in other words, 0.2 of all the flights that are not late have no complaints. So that tells us that 0.8 of all the flights that are not late do have complaints. We can also use our diagram to illustrate these two probabilities. Um, the probability that there are no complaints given a flight is not late is 0.2, means that this region here, which is outside region C, so we're talking about the no complaint region, takes up 0.2 of the um, not late flight region. So this white region here actually takes up 0.2 of it. Well, the number of elements here is 0.2 of the total number of elements in NL. It doesn't look like it on this diagram. The areas are definitely not proportional. Um, but that's the idea. So if the number of elements here make up 0.2 of NL, so I'm talking about the number of elements in the NC region. So it's outside just this white region here. We put the number of elements in this white region over the number of elements inside this rectangle, we get 0.2, which means that the number of elements in the yellow region must make up 0.8 of the rectangular region. It's just that the areas are not drawn to scale. But that's the idea. Basically, we're using this result here. So we're conditioning on the fact that a flight is not late. So we're just considering all the flights that are not late. And we're looking for the probability or proportions of flights for which there were complaints and the proportion of flights of all the flights that were not late for which there were no complaints. And these two proportions or probabilities must add to one. If we just think in terms of selecting from just this set of um, non-late flights, so there are only two possibilities for flights that are not late. Either there were complaints or there were no complaints. So these two probabilities must add to 1. Calculating all of this here, we get 0 0.803. Now, in any probability problem, we have to get an answer that is less than 1. If we get 1 point something, straight away it's wrong. So anyway, that's the law of total probability. 
Next we want the probability that a flight was late given that there were complaints on this flight. So we want the probability of L given that there were complaints, given C. Well, we were given the probability that um, there were complaints given L is 0.9, but of course that's not the same as probability of L given C. Now we can use our conditional probability formula here. This is the probability of L intersecting C divided by the probability of C. So the event that's conditioned on appears in the denominator. Now we've already worked out the probability of L and C or the probability of C and L. Same thing. We have it here. And we've worked out the probability of C. It's 0.803. So to four decimal places, our answer is 0 0.0336.